Social prescribing is a key part of dealing with health inequalities in London. We know that people's health isn't just affected by what's happening to them physically. We know that health inequalities are there because of all the social things that are happening with people, because of the emotional difficulties that they have. Health inequalities is, is massive. Um, we know that 90% of health is impacted by social issues. And so we want to get people who are experts in this field dealing with their social issues, not medics who will medicalise it. Yes, often it feels like treating the kind of medical diagnosis was only sticking a plaster on the underlying problem and having some solution for some of those more fundamental problems around finances, home setup, loneliness, social isolation uh, has really made a big difference to a lot of our neediest patients. So if someone's being evicted, that's the thing, that's their focus on their mind. They don't want to talk about their health. They want to know, I need my housing resolved. So we have a lot of people that might come to us because of mental health, food, poverty, homelessness things like social isolation and loneliness, things like domestic violence and abuse. Social prescribers will be able to concentrate on those that have more complex needs, more complex social needs. And our link workers are really kind of trying to support patients in terms of how they can get the best care they need based on some of these social issues. There will be groups of patients who should be accessing healthcare more than they're currently doing. There will be patients who are neglecting their health, who are not getting checkups in a timely fashion. And interestingly, of course, social prescribing can also help with that as well. Social prescribing is part of the fabric of how we reach these vulnerable groups that necessarily won't always interact with primary care. There are a lot of people who fall through the cracks or through the net who um, aren't always picked up by services. So it's been really, really important to have social prescribing, being able to kind of identify those who may be lonely, socially isolated, and being able to work with them. Those individuals that are most disengaged from services that often feel quite isolated, neglected, or not listen to, they can get what they need as well. Without knowing that there's a social prescriber or without knowing that there's all these community links or funding or services, you've got to be someone who's proactive enough to go on the internet and have a look. And if you're someone who doesn't use the internet, like an elderly person or someone who just doesn't really understand technology, they're not going to find these things without a social prescriber to go, hey, let's sit down and, and go through all the things you want to change, let's look at the goals, let's look at things we can help with. Social prescribing is the answer to many different problems that we have. I'm just so pleased with um, the impact that it's having on so many people that desperately, desperately need it. Having that systematic approach to social prescribing, ensuring that we're partnering with diverse communities, ensuring that we're holding ourselves accountable to engaging the most vulnerable and those who are not around the table. Those are some of the things that will be important in ensuring that social prescribing helps us to address inequalities.